done, we look to race 20, heat 12. And of course there is one man to look for, that's number 25, Trevor Banks. We're looking to see whether he's made into that first corner. Rob Fortune looks to have got there before him as they come round that first end. Fortune is right there with him, but Trevor Banks gets the blank strength in front. Again, he pulls that front wheel in the air going down the back straight. Total drive for Trevor Banks, and he really does look to be in good form. So, we've got three riders. Said those semi-finals and finals are going to be something to look forward to, but not very often we get three riders on maximum points, unbeaten into the semi-finals. Trevor Banks looks like joining Steve Scoville and Will Price. <laughs> well, of course, to him. Peter Roy has saved him, but he's not been able to make any impression on them. Just one more lap to go for Trevor Banks to mean that he has had three rides and equaled three wins, the same as Steve Schofield and Paul Fly. He comes to the line in second place. Peter Roy gets third. And as they come across the line, it's Adrian Stevens who gets fourth place. Race 20, heat 12 of the solo competition. It's a win for number 25, Trevor Banks, his third ride and his third win. In second place, number 11, Rob Fortune. Third place, number 4, Lloyd. Fourth place, number 374, Amy Stevens. And the fifth place, number 30. Sixth place, 27. Seventh place, 37. Eighth place, 127. And the winning time, 104.25, 104.25 the time. So as we finish the qualifying rides for the solo competition, 666, Paul Sanders and Neil Popple. into line so we'll watch to see what happens obviously an interesting one this one because Craig Cheatham has scored well so far this afternoon he'll be looking for a good result in his final ride Steve Smith had that win earlier on and then a third place second time out so he'll again be looking for a good result to go down that back straight, I can see that Steve Smith is back in fourth place, but it's Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams that have got to the front. So obviously, whatever happened in that first ride, Gary Jackson has now got sorted. Great Cheatham trying to save him. Gary Adams got very, very close to Great Cheatham there, and do think that there's going to be a challenge from Gary Adams and Paul Baisby. Oh, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams come round off that bottom corner. Leading quite comfortably from Kate Gary Adams pushing on behind him. Smith also not having a good time in fourth place at the moment. But as they go into the last lap, as they come past us, one outfit that certainly seems to be getting quicker and quicker. that second spot and you've just got the pit bending to negotiate and Steve Smith looks as if he's not been able to close the ground on Jerry Adams so as they come to the line it's going to be a win his second of the afternoon for outfit number 23 that's Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams second place outfit number one two Craig Cheatham and Clyde Reynolds and outfit number two Steve Smith and Keith Wall take third spot of the sidecar competition, it was a win for outfit number 23, that's Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. In second place, number one, Craig Chatham and Clive Reynolds. In third place, number 55, Jerry Adams and passenger Paul Baysby.
First place to outfit number two and fifth place number six, six, six. The winning time, 129.51, 129.51. Second win in the afternoon for number 23, Gary Jackson. I can see that uh, Ivor Matthews is the one that they're uh, desperately trying to get in line. And it looks as if we do only have four outfits. So the starter now pulling them into line. They let the tapes go, and again you can see that Ivor Matthews hasn't made the best of starts. It's ready for him. Gary and Steve right up in second place, Ivor Matthews in third at the moment. Oh, I can see that uh, Gary and Steve made the best of that first bend and have now got themselves to the front as Reg Blackburn has to be consent with second place, but Ivor Matthews now trying to come through on the inside of him. goes to that second spot, he finds the gap going into that top end, he gets up in the second, and now Carrie and Stone together looking over their shoulders, looking for Ivor Matthews, and indeed they saw that he was exactly there. So, we watch to see what happens as Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones come from that first spot. That's where they're certainly making the advantage. Gary pulls away a little bit going down that back straight, but watch again what happens. Ivan Matthews can corner so much harder and faster, and he drives in hard. He doesn't seem to get quite to the advantage on this bottom bend, but certainly the top bend he does. Keeping the power on going down that back straight. Oh, Gary Wright knows he's there, and he knows he just didn't make a mistake, didn't leave any gaps in the bends. But as they drive hard coming out of this bottom bend, Ivan Matthews not able to get through. Gary Wright gets the win. Ivan Matthews gets second place. Richard Connick back on finish is third. And coming across the line in fourth is Ryan Matthews. Ryan Matthews and Lynn Green. And a win, 4-0. Gary Wright and Steve Wright. In second place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. Third place, number 26, Reg and Colin Blackbourne. And fourth place, number 74, Steve Lingwood and Shane Lingwood, I should say, and Lynn Green. The winning time, 132.50, 132.50. second place and it looks as if we've got quite a scrap going on for that third spot at the moment but rustling and Paul Urich has got away but down the back straight is rustling and Paul Urich that's certainly leading comfortably into this pit bend they really do look to be on form this afternoon Again, Jason Glennie looks over his shoulder. Oh, I'm saying Jason Glennie, what am I saying that for? Of course, it's Steve Hargraves on the back of uh, Tim Bennett. Oh, Jason Glennie looks over his shoulder. 
Len and Ray do seem a bit quicker in the corners. That's where they close up. But as we see the checkered flag being raised, it is Russelling and Paul Urich that have complete three wins. Three wins. Four, outfit number six, Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, number 12, Tim Bennett and passenger Steve Hargreaves. In third place, number 149, Lennon Ray Foreman. And fourth place, number 46, Andy Nourish and Eddie Elvis. The winning time, 131.52, 131.52, 6, 12, 149 and 46. Page, we are now approaching the interval. We've got race 24 obviously waiting to come to the line. And then the interval. And I've been asked if I could let the vintage and classic bike people know that we are approaching that interval and there is so much around today for you to uh, have a look at that uh, I think it's going to be a difficult choice to make because the vintage bikes are going to come out onto the circuit see if I can persuade somebody to come and let you know a bit more about them as they come out but uh, we'll work on that as we get to that interval as we indeed are underway with the last race before the Operator made it better in the start. Roger Wilson now moves on the inside of them. They'll go down that back straight. Oh, there's a great scrap going on for that second spot. I'm anxious to know who it was who was working their way through into that second spot. But Roger Mesa and Shane Latham have got through and they've got away. <laughs> Tremendous first bend and he's certainly keeping with it as Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham try to get away. He tries to stay with them as they come up past me for the second time. Oh, that's Scrappy G is with Dave Steer, number 17. It looks as if they're losing out. Dave Steer moves through in the third spot. So Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham stay at the front. There's a great scrap going on for that third place. Alan and John are desperate not to give it up. And as we know, and I said to you at the end of the last race, Russell Ling has had three rides and three wins. Going into the semi-final stage with exactly the same status is a rider number 51, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapple. Eight twelve, a win for outfit number 51, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapple. In second place, number 148, that of course is the outfit of Rod Winterburn and Chris Winterburn. Third place, number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In fourth place, number 3, Alan and John Blewett. Fifth place, number 33, and sixth place, number 25. The winning time, 130.70, 130.70. So, we've reached that time in the programme where now the point scorer is... Number 3, of course, Stevie Schofield. Number 17... That's Clayton Williams. Number seven, all the way up from Cornwall, Gary Lobb. Number ten, Tony Atkin, of course, last year's winner. Eight four four, Vincent Kenjin, all the way up from Kent. Number one seven two, Colin L. Number sixty five, Jason Wilby. Number nineteen, that's Trevor Eden. And number fifty one, Steve Holding. Number four, Peter Lloyd. Number thirty, Alan Martin. And number one two seven. Gerald Short. That's the lineup, an impressive final lineup at any meeting in the country. Here at the Poacher, it's only a semi final. We watch to see what happens. If you look across that far side, they all start to come into line. A few anxious throttle hands I can see, and a terrible start it turned out to be. Only Vince Kinchin missing the semi final. The rest of the riders go, though, it's a clean start as they go down that first straight into the first corner. So the four together as they go into that pit bend for the first time. Tony Atkin, Colin Earl on the outside, Clayton Williams on the inside. And it's Steve Schofield that's back in fourth place at the moment. Now he starts to come through. Look at he get through on the inside of Colin Earl. Tony Atkin is the one that's the rest of the field. Tony Atkin is the lead as he goes 
past us, Clayton Williams still there in second place, Steve Scopers moved up in the third and look at the way that Clayton Williams is trying to go around Tony Atkin, he's made it all the way around the long way of the pit bend and down the bank straight he goes and gets into the lead in front of him. points to get him through. Remember these points will be added on to the heat points and it will be enough to get him through in third place. As he's seen a great battle go on in front of him. Clayton Williams showing that he's in good form this afternoon. does get away and give them all a fair start. Once again, they come in line, you'll hear the revs go up, and this time they're away cleanly, there's no red flags, they're away, or is there? There we go, into that first 
spinned and you can see that Russell Ling has made an exceptionally good start. Russell Ling goes through the first corner from him. Gary Jackson trying to go for the outside line, although I can see those red flags flying. Oh, it looks as if we are away this time cleanly. All six outfits have got away. And this time it is Gary Jackson that's got to the front. Dave Steele has gone well into that first bend. Craig Cheatham is up there as well. Ivan Matthews moving through on the inside of Craig Cheatham and gets up into second place. Russell Ains back in fourth. I can see that it is uh, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams that have actually taken the lead though. Ivan Matthews holding on to second place, moves through very, very tight in the bends. Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds up in third. Dave Steer holding third place at the moment. Russell Ains in third. and Colin Blackwell, they pull out on the bottom of the circuit. And as we look to that far side, Gary Jackson getting away from the rest of the field, comes around very, very quickly around that bottom bend. He's driving a wide line. I'm sure Gary's testing the circuit to see exactly what is the faster line for the final. Oh, Dave Steer going well now, trying to move through for that third place. He gets through in the third place. Oh, the brilliant entrance into the corner from Dave Steer, but Craig Cheatham comes back at him going down that back straight. Well, I can only assume that Russell Ling has hit a problem because he really is slowing as he goes down that back straight. Into the last lap we go, and Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams have got a good lead on Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. Dave Steer has got that third place back again. Russell Ling has got back to the back of the field. I wonder if the maths will work out. Will they make the final with the points they're going to get in this semi-final? Of course, they were on maximum points as they went into this semi-final. We watch to see whether this position will be good enough to get them through. Gary Jackson certainly be in that final. I feel sure that Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones will be. Dave Steer, well, that could be questionable because Dave didn't have the strongest points coming into the semi-final. Craig Cheatham and Russell Ling. And a very strong win there from Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. It's outfit number 23 that goes in first place. In second place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. In third place, number 17, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In fourth place, number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. And in fifth place, outfit number six, Russell Ng and Paul Urich. The winning time, 132.31, 132.31. We watch to see what happens in race 28. This the second semi-final box. We've got number 51, Roger Mesa and Shane Lapple. Zero, Gary Wright and Steve Wright. Number three, Alan and John Blewett. Number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. 148. Rod Winterburn and Chris Winterburn. And number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. Well, long last, the riders have emerged from the pit box. Obviously, uh, Steve Smith was already out on the track. The rest of the riders now joining them. The rest of them do come in the line now. We've got all six on that start line. Away we go. It looks a clean start. We've got away first time. This time with the second semi-final. And as they come past me for the first time, it looks like it's Gary Wright that's got to the front. Roger Meester is there with him. Up, up in the third place as they go down the back straight it is Roger Meester that's worked his way through into the front Gary and Steve Wright have been forced to go wide on this bottom bend but they're still in touch with Roger Meester as Roger comes wide coming out of the bend Gary goes after him watch them come around that bottom bend it's going to be interesting to see how these points work out because obviously Steve Smith is a long way down the field but as Roger Mesa goes very very wide you can see Gary Wright we can see a gap he's only been there and he went for it on the inside and he's going to shoot that top end so now Roy Winterburn has got very close to him for that second spot but Gary Wright really does look to be home very very quickly at the moment Roger Mesa equally quickly stays out in front comes round off that pit bend goes into the last lap as he goes fastest this time oh, all sorts of instructions going from uh, Chris Winterburn to Rod Winterburn he knows there's a chance of actually getting that uh, second place but Gary Wright again gets close to Roger Mesa and he locks it up going into that bottom bend as you can see Rod Winterburn took advantage of that and got close as well as indeed Roger Mesa goes wide coming out of the bend Gary goes through on the inside Oh, that was very, very 
because the knee going in and had to check a flag, but I do think that Roger Isa hung on to it. Wait for that to be confirmed by the lap scorers, but a great effort from Gary and Steve Wright. Second semi-final, a win for outfit number 51, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. In second place, zero, Gary and Steve Wright. In third place, number 148, Rodney Winterbourne and Chris Winterburn. In fourth place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. In fifth place, number three, Alan and John Blewett. And in sixth place, number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. The winning time, 135.21, 51-0, 148, 135.21. These are the riders that uh, are obviously disappointed they never made that A final, but nothing wrong with picking up a bit of prize money for winning the B final as we get underway. We watch the see on break going into that first day. Oh, they come off that first bend as you see where he's covering has made the best of the starts. But obviously with machinery in that first bend, the clerk of the course putting a red flag up. And the rest of the riders being brought to a halt, so they will of course do the rerun. And Tim Bennett going for what looks to me to be gate two, perhaps three. Yeah, it looks like possibly gate three because uh, Those of you a little bit closer, I'm sure, now have realised that uh, those very distinctive helmets have moved into gate two. Steve Smith right out on this outside in gate five. Red platform going out there as well. So that's how they line up. The tapes are set. Away go the tapes and we get a clean start this time as we get underway with the start of the B final. And it's Alan and John Blue that have made the rest of the starts as they indeed go into that first corner. Alan and John Blue. made that very quick start but they've lost out a little bit of time on the rest of the field as we watch them come round oh, as they come past me it is indeed Alan and John Blewett they're still leading from Dave Sear in second Rodden, Chris but as you watch them go down into that bottom bend Alan and John Blewett but we're disappointed, I'm sure, that they're in this B final, but once you're in it, then the best thing you can do is go out and win it. Dave Steer has got different ideas, though, as Dave Steer starts to close up. They hold a very, very tight line and a very quick line on this bottom bend, and it's coming out of that bottom bend that they do look to have the advantage. As they go into the last lap, well, this is going to be a terrific finish, I'm sure, because they still get very, very close. Will he be closer this time? He's certainly a lot closer. Third lap as we watch to see him come round. This is where he's quicker. Is he going to do it? Will he pull it on, pull it tight enough? Alan and John Blewett knew he was there. They power on and indeed take the B final. The final for the sidecar poacher class and indeed a win for outfit number three, Alan and John Blewett. In second place, number 17, Dave Sear and Andrew Orchard. In third place, number 148, Rodney Winterburn and Chris Winterburn. In fourth place, number two, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Fifth place, number 26, Reg and Colin Blackbourne. And sixth place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Steve Hargreaves. The winning time, 134.59. 134.59. So that indeed was the sidecar B final. We should now be seeing the solo B final. And then of course we move on to the solo A final, followed by that the big sidecar final. Thanks and watch the numbers carefully. I can inform you that uh, Frank Killian is out there, but he's not riding his own bike, obviously not being able to repair it. He's actually coming out on bike number 86. So obviously Andy Rimmer doing uh, Frankie Killian a favour and allow him to use his bike as we get underway with the start of the B final. What you do is the 
But as we watch to that far side, you can see Peter Lloyd has now put the power on, has got away from the away. Leading that battle for fourth and fifth place is Adrian Stevens. But Peter Lloyd trying to make this D final 100% here as he goes down that back straight. Got well, it's close to the line, that battle for fourth place, and I do think that it was 65 that may just have made it, but we'll wait for the official result. In second place, number 13, Scott Nichols. In third place, number 19, Trevor Eden. Fourth place, number 65, Jason Wilby. And fifth place, number 374, Adrian Stevens. Sixth place finisher there, rider number 43, Frankie Killeen. Winning time, 105.34, 105.34, we now move on to the big finals, the ones that they all came here for to get the title of 1994 solo Lincolnshire Boater with Paul Fry. Number 17, Clayton Williams. Number 25, Trevor Banks. Number 3, Steve Schofield. Number 11, Rob Fortune. 10 is Tony Atkins. 61, Robbie Fuller. Number 7, Gary Lloyd. I should say Gary Lobb. My apologies to all the Cornish supporters. Gary Lobb, of course, is number 7. 172, Colin Earl. And number 34, Steve Bishop. What a tremendous lineup. I know there's been a lot of hard work in getting you a good lineup. He's been going well. Now, oh, Clayton Williams. He's got faster as the day's gone on. Well, it doesn't really bear thinking about, does it? Just sit back and enjoy it. Will Tony Atkin make it two in a row? He was the winner last year. Oh, we look across that far side. All the riders come in line as we get underway. It's Paul Fry that's fighting with his machine. He's lost ground by doing that. And Trevor Banks has made a brilliant start. Tony Atkins come through as Clayton Williams goes through on the inside and problems for Colin Earl. A great shame that Steve Schofield's got problems as well. Steve Schofield pulls off, Colin Earl pulls off and Trevor Banks flies down that back straight. Before he can go after Trevor Banks. So a great scrap for that second place before we see any one of them trying to close down on Trevor Banks. Clayton Williams still there in second. Trevor Banks. Look at the effort that Paul Fry is putting in to try and close on that second place. He desperately wanted to win this one. in fourth, Tony Atkin in fifth, Gary Lobb in sixth, Steve Bishop in seventh, and Rory Fuller in eighth place. May have been a loose stone, but, or just purely the weight of the dust, but if Paul is cut out now, please show your congratulations to those four riders that are coming round. That's the one, two, three, four, as they went across the line. I think it's going to be with me. They have shown you brilliant entertainment this afternoon. The dust started to get a bit of a worry, but... You can't see better racing than that that you've seen here this afternoon. Believe me, I travel all over the country commentating at grass tracks, and that's one of the best finals I've seen this year. Tremendous racing. What a victory for Trevor Banks.
The River Lynx is the 1994 solo poacher winner. Paul Fry, well, you can't say that guy doesn't try, can you? A tremendous second place. How many other riders would have been content with third? It's a poacher solo A final. Race 31 in your programme, a win for rider number 25, Trevor Banks. In second place, number 55, Paul Fry. In third place, number 17, Clayton Williams. In fourth place, number 11, Rob Fortune. In fifth place, number 10, Tony Atkins. In sixth place, number 7, Gary Lobb. In seventh place, number 34, Steve Bishop. In eighth place, number 61, Robbie Fuller. And in ninth place, number 172, Colin Earl. The winning time, 103.60. 103.60, the winning time. We've just one more race to go, but even then, there's no need to rush off. Because uh, and Shane Lapham. They're joined by number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Number 6, Russell Ng and Paul Urich. Zero is Gary Wright and Steve Wright. 15, Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. And number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. A great sidecar lineup. Oh, we will watch to see what happens as they all come into line. Remember, this is over the same race distance they've been racing all afternoon. The start so important for these sidecars as the dust starts to fly like it has done this afternoon. If you can get clear vision, Coming out of that first bend, you do get a distinct advantage. It's hard coming through from the back when the dust is flying like it is today. But we will see. You'll know that uh, Russell Ling had obviously done his homework. Even though he had a problem in that semi-final, he still made it to the final. Well, they start to come into line. The start of bringing them in line. Away goes the start and we watch to see it, a nice good clean one this time as they go for that first spin. Gary Jackson struggling a little bit, it's Russelling that's got to the front. Russelling and Paul Urich putting up. Gary Jackson is in third. Gary Wright is up into fourth place but it's no front three that we're watching at the moment. Russelling and Paul Urich, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. Roger Misa pulls it tight in that bottom bend, trying to get a line to get round Russelling. Gary Jackson goes after them both, and it's Gary watching where Roger Misa is going. Oh, Russelling. Gary Jackson will then know that he's going to leave gaps on the outside. So Gary Jackson will look to go on that outside. But Russelling, riding a brilliant race at the moment, holds some tremendous lines, and Roger again throws it wide. Well, he's gone very, very quickly into this top end. Russelling still holding on to it. Line, that's going to give him a quicker entrance into the bend. It means that he may be tied to coming out of that bend. Gary Jackson still not able to close on them, and Roger Misa goes through. Well, he found a gap. He's gone wide, and Russell Ng comes back at him as they go into the last lap. Roger Misa has found a gap. Russell Ng now in second place, but under pressure. into the bend and Gary pushes for that wide line again but as they come to the line it's going to be outfit number 51 Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham that take it Gary Jackson is back sneak through for second place Russell Ng the leader for so long in the 1994 final is in fact pushed back to third place well a tremendous hard luck for Russell Ng and Paul Lewis what a hard race they rode but what a brilliant ride once again this season from Roger Mesa and Shane Lapham Gary Jackson knew that if he just kept working hard, he may get through to a higher place. He's got himself up into second. But again, I would say to you, show your appreciation. We've got the presentation in a very few moments. Once they've got themselves sorted out, we'll get all the riders up here. Number 51, that's Roger Bisa and Shane Lapham. I'm sure that all these outfits are going to come round and uh, allow you to show them their appreciation. In second place, number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Third place, number six, Russell Ng and Paul Urich. In fourth place, it is zero, Gary and Steve Wright. And in fifth place, outfit number one, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds. <laughs>
Uh, indeed, the four outfits coming round, you can see that there's a lot of smiling faces there. I think they enjoyed that final. It's a nice hard surface, you know that you can push it out a little bit. And indeed, a tremendous result. Uh, all the hard work that's gone into putting this meeting on, I think you'll agree that when you see two finals as strongly competed for as that, you know that it's all been worthwhile. To complete that official result of race 32, 51, 23, 6, 0, 1, the winning time, 132.32. 132.32. Of course, if you uh, have got a right job, I've got one raffle number that hasn't been claimed. 3204, sorry, it's two here. 6756 as well. So if you could check your raffle tickets before you go. What are you seeing in the outcome? Tell you what, you're going to have to go a long way to find anything better than that, but okay. Them lads rode their arms out. Well, I totally agree with you. It's something I said as they crossed the line, but I must admit, both those finals, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. They're racing all day long. I think I agree with you that they've been very, very hard. Difficult ground. I think um, people don't appreciate until they've actually run a grass track what it's actually like, do they, Rich? That's right. I mean, I think I've put something like 100 hours in the last fortnight in setting this grass track up. But uh, in Diamond Dive, I'd out of racing here today, and then watching them lads racing that final, it's all been worthwhile. Well, I agree. <laughs> well, hopefully that we've got uh, all our riders over here while we've been talking. I can't see many of them emerging from the pits. Already, but while I've got an opportunity, I will say that once again, I think I've seen some brilliant racing this afternoon. The size of the track, it's the sort of track that I love to see every weekend. It's a perfect size. It creates good racing. And you saw exactly what happened today, all through the heats, right up to the semi-finals and the finals. And then in the final, I made a statement when I saw them on the line that really I wouldn't like to have put any money on this sport to say out of that lineup who was going to do the winning. And I meant that seriously because so many of them had got better as the day had gone on. And then when we saw that lineup for the final, it really was very much a lottery. Any one of them could have won it. But in the end, we ended up with third place to a man that never gives up. In third this afternoon at the Lincolnshire Poacher was Clayton Williams. Well, we've got third place up here now, Clayton Williams. We move on to second place, and I know that this has got to be one that a few in the crowd were hoping was going to be number one. It wasn't to be this afternoon. He was in second place, a brilliant rider, Paul Fry. second place. It means that there's just the biggest round of applause to come. For the man that's going to go away with the title of the 1994 Lincolnshire Poacher winner, this year it is of course, through the ranks! Well, I think, as always, that uh, at any big meeting, why not a round of applause for first, second, and third, Clayton Williams, Paul Bryan, Trevor Banks. And I know, as a lot of people always say, we make sure you have a few words to them before we go home. It does complete the video as well. So I nip across here quickly and say, Clayton, I reckon you had a slow start today. What do you mean, though? What do you mean, from the first race? Yeah, I'm not really used to this sort of start still. Um, I'm myself and I'm not the green light to start. I'm starting to still at the start. So today is a little bit different. You're to do what you want. So the first one is there. So I got used to it after again after a while. Well, I would say you certainly got used to it because uh, certainly I was uh, thinking that maybe you were going to be the one that was number one. Yeah, I was certainly trying. I, in the, on the last one, I fogged up the inside because I knew Paul was going to dive underneath or something like that. But, I 
Say you definitely caught up. Clayton would say you caught up. <laughs> okay, Paul. I mean, a brilliant ride. Speedway going well at the moment. Um, a little bit inconsistent. A bit patchy. A bit patchy, but you travel a long way, and obviously we appreciate it. But the man, obviously, I've got to get a few words out. Obviously, the man that's won it. Trevor, brilliant riding this afternoon. Yeah, um, the track suited me. It was hard and not too grippy, and uh, I made a very good start in the final. I was lucky there was no green lights because you could do what you wanted to do at the start, so I made a bit of a flyer. Um, I looked around a couple of times and I could see Paul's number plate and I knew that if Clayton hadn't have been holding him up, he would have probably gone past Clayton and been on my back wheel. So I, I just head down and just flat out looking for the chequered plate. So a uh, great day for me and uh, as what Clayton said about the club, fantastic meeting, well put on and everything. So yeah, thanks. Thank the club for me. Oh. That's brilliant. Well done, Trevor. I think the only way to me to say that you've heard one or two of the little tricks of the trade this afternoon that these guys have let you into the secrets of. The winners of the 1994 Poacher in third, Clayton Williams, in second, Paul Fry, and in the winner, Trevor Banks. Well, we've got to do that again now, haven't we? Because, of course, we had a brilliant sidecar meeting as well, didn't we? The Lincolnshire Poacher sidecar competition. Again, it could have been any three that I could have gone up here this afternoon. But indeed, I think we've got three very deserving crews coming up. And I think you'll show your appreciation of that fact as well. When I say that in third place in the 1994 Poacher was Rosling and Paul Urich. probably finishing in third, Ross and Paul were a bit unlucky because they were caught on the line. But they were caught on the line by somebody that I'm sure a lot of people thought might have been the man that was going to take the first place this afternoon. Of course, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. There is only the first place to get as well. And did you expect him to get it? He worked hard. There's a lot here that are saying yes. I wonder if they really do mean that. Well, you can show your appreciation because the winner of the 1994 Lincolnshire Poacher Sidecar Competition is Roger Mesa and Shane Apple. Well, as I'm sure that I've got to do with as I did with the solos, you learned a few tricks of the trade when I was talking to the solos, so we'll see if we can find out if the sidecar's learning again this afternoon. Start obviously with, I think, I've got to say, I'm lucky, Russell. Third place? Yeah, I'm lucky, Jim. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I was trying to, I was thinking too much, really. I was trying to, I was trying to think where they was. I knew Gary Roy's wide and Roger would be there somewhere. 
And um, while you're thinking, you're probably, like Roger said to me, you're probably losing a bit of time. But um, we tried the best. You certainly did. And Paul, I know that uh, as a passenger, you probably look back as much as you do look forward. But could uh, you do anything about it? Yeah, I was uh, hitting Russell so hard on the back because I could see Roger on the outside. You know, and uh, there's nothing we could do really because Roger was down the outside. It was wide. He made the turn like short and come underneath. We would come inside. So it was all right. You know, it's a good time. Well, obviously, I think you're hearing. You know, the psychology of what goes on in the sport, I think that was very honest of you to say that, Russell, that obviously when you're thinking about where they're coming from. But I think quickly I'll just say to Gary, because uh, you've got this reputation for going wide, but you've really got to uh, show that you can ride the inside of the circuit as well, haven't you? Yeah, I was trying both today, but in that final, Russell was on the inside, and Roger was trying to go out the outside, and then they were swapping over. I didn't know which way to go. So I was just trying to pick up the pieces when uh, it was all sorted out. Um, yeah, good final, I enjoyed it. And things obviously looking forward to perhaps two weeks time when we've got that second round of the Masters to look forward to. And the bike obviously in great condition. Yeah, very pleased with the bike, it's going very well. Yeah, new bike, so uh, very hopeful. Well, very hopeful. And Kevin obviously enjoying this season. Uh, yes, very good. I've uh, stopped using my glasses this year. Uh, not seeing where you're going. It's very useful. <laughs> now that's not the sort of trade secret you're supposed to let them know, Kevin. I'm going to walk away from that one quickly. Well, I've got just one more crew to talk to, and obviously uh, the winner. <laughs> You're not allowed to boo in the corner. Roger, a hard day, and uh, not the easiest of finals I've seen you ride. No, no, it, 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 was, it was a very difficult day. As I said, I worried about Gary, and I worry about Russ, and I worry about them all. But when she'd been racing for a long while, like I have, and Kevin was asking why, why are you still motivated? Well, the answer to that is simple. A lot of winters in our sport, a lot of us learn a lot of tricks, so those winters get even worse. At the end of the day, there's people like Gary, Russell, Robbie Wilson, one or two others that join the elite band that just want to get out there and race. No matter what happens, race, race hard, and that's what it was all about today in the final. We all raced hard, we all thoroughly enjoyed it, we're all friends at the end of it. Well, there's nothing I can add to that, Roger, at all. Last word with Shane. Shane, a long way to travel to get up to you today, but obviously well worth it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. well worth it. I thought we had a good start. I thought, uh, you know, we knew for a chance here. Roger made it for the screw. It was good, yeah, that sums it all up, I think. The Sidecar Champions for 1994 of the Lincolnshire Poacher. In third place, of course, Russell England, Paul Urich. In second, Gary Jackson, and in Kevin Wilson. And in third place, of course, Russell England, Paul Urich. In second, Gary Jackson, and Kevin Williams. But our winners this afternoon, Roger Misa and Shane Lapple. Thank you to our landowners. I mentioned it a few moments ago when we called you up, but we are indebted to you, sir. The club more than perhaps me that just travels and commentates and things, but thank you very much indeed. And it remains to say thank you all for staying behind for the presentations. I hope you've enjoyed the racing as much as I have, and I hope that we're going to see you soon at a grass track in the next few weeks.